Hello and welcome to my channel again. I'll be talking to you about something which I think everyone must have done, but everyone must have found some difficulty in it, which is hip spica application for a child. So let's see what are the indications for hip spica. The three commonest indications for hip spica are a fracture shaft femur for a child less than six years of age, DDH between six months to eighteen months of age, and in some cases of septic arthritis or osteomyelitis of the femur. So what are the eight steps of success for a hip spica application? First is the equipment preparation. So I use something which is very very low tech, which are just a spica plank. Now this plank is about 100 centimeters in length and 10 centimeters in width and about a centimeter thick. It is made of wood and this is the easiest to make. I make a smaller plank for kids, smaller kids, which is 90 centimeter by 8 centimeters. The second step is the preparation of the materials, which are one, have a bucket of warm water ready, <clears throat> two to three pairs of gloves, one six inch and one four inch soft roll, two sizes of stockinets and scissors, plaster rolls, which are at least six to eight and ten plasters, roller bandages and five plaster slabs of which two of them are big and three of them are small and a roll of dynaplast. Let's see the patient positioning in this case. This is a wooden plank which we will be putting under the patient's body like so. And there is an L clamp of the table which will be required to hold the plank in place. So this is how the child is completely free from the posterior aspect and you can easily roll plasters around it. The next step is the reduction of the fracture for a fracture femur or reduction of the dislocation in case of a DDH. So this is easily achieved with the help of that plank because you can push the C-arm in completely. There is completely unobstructed view of the C-arm and you, achieve, you can give good amount of traction counter traction with the help of this method. Padding is very important of stockinet and soft roll. So let's see how we do that. The big roll of soft roll, which is uh, of stockinet, which is three inches in diameter, that is stretched out so as to cover the entire torso. This is the th thick one, the three inch one. And as we can know, we have a long narrow stockinet, which is about 1.5 inch uh, thick that is to be rolled from the level of the heel to the level of the groin. Another short narrow stockinet is to be rolled out from the level of the knee to the level of the groin when we are doing a one and a half hips spica which we usually do. Pad it, pad the torso well with the help of three roller bandages which are usually six inches in length. This gives a good adequate padding and doesn't uh, make a very tight plaster around the thought also. Soft roll application is very important. See to it that all the bony edges are rolled well with the help of the soft roll. Especially the groin area needs to be cover, covered well with multiple rolls of soft roll. After which the other areas can be rolled with single layers of soft roll. I usually do not like to cover the, the foot in this case. I usually stop it just short of the heel. Then is the first plaster of Paris cast as cast application. Roll the plaster of Paris well with over the torso. See to it that two or three layers of soft roll is applied. And especially around the groin, it is rolled two or three times. And then you apply the plaster slabs. As I said, there are five plaster slabs. The two longer ones, which are 30 centimeters long, are to be applied from posterior to anterior. 
and the two smaller ones which are the 20 cm ones are to be applied in the direction orthogonal to it so as to achieve maximum stability the fifth plaster slab is then applied over the anterior surface of the knee which gives a good stability and prevents breakage of the plaster at the level of the knee after which the pop slab is completed pop is completed over the rest of the regions in order to give a smooth surface to the entire plaster cast once this is set then we go ahead for the step 7 which is reinforcement with fiber cast i have since i have started using fiber cast i have stopped giving a bar in between this gives rise to much better perineal care and a much stronger and good looking plaster so again the groin area needs to be double wrapped well with the help of the fiber cast and the rest of the plaster can be applied in a single layer last but not the least is the final positioning trimming and the finishing touches it's very easy to slide the plank out after we have completed the procedure it can just be slid out in such manner once the child is completely free from the plank it can then be shifted on to the table the roller bandages from under the torso part of the spica can be removed you can see that it gives a very good space and it's a capacious spica the child is never uncomfortable with this amount of spica and even the groin area and the pubic area is completely uh, spaced out the edges are then taped with the help of dinoplast so that there won't be any plaster sore because of it and these tapes are applied on all regions especially near the pubic region because that is the region where there is a maximum amount of soiling with urine and stools this gives a good touch to the spica and you can see in the final picture it's a very very adequately roomy spica and the child is extremely comfortable with this thus to reiterate what are the 10 8 steps to success preparation of equipment with spica plank casting material and soft roll patient positioning adequately the reduction of the fracture and the ddh can be done cast padding with soft roll and stockinet and a pop application overwrap with fiber cast and trim the edges thus this is how we can do a spica application effectively for more suggestions please contact my so- social media handles i am always available see to it that you like share and subscribe this channel and see you again with a few more videos thank you so much